Hello and welcome and it is Crypto Day, Wednesday 16th of May 2018 and in this video I want to go over some possible scenarios for the price of Bitcoin as we end the year and go into 2019. I have downloaded data from Bitcoin Charts website. So this is weekly data going back for two years. So May of 2016 and I've created a chart. So this is how the market is looking. And I've came up with uh, three different possible scenarios. The first one will be called failed move, fast move higher, where the price action would have a failed breakdown below the support and then rally from there. And that doesn't have to include the failed move. It can rally from here. It can find another successful support test in the 6,000 area and then do it. But I want to uh, put her up now. This is an extra 25 weeks. So this would take us into November. In a situation, as you can see, this would be normal fail move, fast move market behavior if something like this were to exist, because we're right around this area, just around, uh, well, uh, 100 and row number 104. And uh, if it uh, were to break down below support like this and then regain, as you see, a move like this, then that would be really, really nice. And this would be normal upward movement and we can see price action would be trading in the 30s to 40,000 range. That's just what you would expect as a normal leg higher. And it's a small one at that. Looking at this logarithmically, one would be saying at this point, yeah, there's still more upward room to go. We'd go to 60, 70, 100,000 would be what people would be saying at this point. Markets for altcoins, that would depend, of course, on the alternate one. But I think there'd be a good chance that coins like uh, Litecoin, Ethereum, uh, Monero, and so many others are could even vastly outperform the price of uh, Bitcoin. So let's now take a look at this again. But what happens if, say, we do go down to 3,000? But successfully, that, that, that is. Meaning... That would be the area of a bottom. And this is what I've come up with. So here's the break of support. So this would take us, maybe there'd be a couple of days where it would just hover around the 6,000 and then work its way from six down to three. Spend a few days going sideways. And at this point, people will be panicking because they would be looking at this on a linear chart saying, oh my, this is like going to nothing. Of course, in this example, it's not. The next example, it could, but not this one. So therefore, in a situation here, how I've set this one up is after it hits the bottom, spends about a month or so consolidating around the 3,000-ish or so area up to 4,000, and then about a month or so, making it back to 8,500 and consolidating its gains for a couple of months. And this would be a very interesting pattern because I left you with what I would consider to be a very nice, interesting, bullish pattern. Now, a situation like this, it could go on and do what you've seen before. And from this point on, do the 30, 40, 60,000. That would be quite normal. Maybe this market uh, might come down to 4,400, spend another four months in this area. And then maybe in 2020, it may get above that and has to have a more longer sideways correction with 3,000 holding. If something like that were to occur, I'll just keep trading along the way and I'll be working towards profiting as a trader if that's what the message of the market would happen to give me. So now what I'm going to do in here is copy or use the exact same price action up until a little bit past this bottom, but not have a successful correction at 3,000. So in this case, when it goes to 3,000, it would then rally up to, well, I put it in over six grand. Maybe it goes up to even 8,000 or 9,000 before a move like this were to occur. And then large, large volatility. This would be normal to have larger size down moves that we've ever seen in this time frame 
when an event like this is to take place. That's why I increased its uh, volatility amongst this example compared to the other two simulations that I put into place. Although they're not simulations, they're just me putting numbers in and then putting a chart together. And the situation within this, I have it set up so that it would consolidate those losses for a couple of months. Staying within 1,000 to about 1,800. And I end this one off with a very good green candle. It's best week. Or pretty darn near close to it. But that's very normal for markets to have their best weeks, their best days, and even their best months. After it's gotten its ass kicked pretty seriously. Percentage-wise, if you look back at the Dow Jones, the best two days or best uh, cumulative uh, point, I think you'd be going back to October of 2008, when the market went from well over eight or well under 8,000 to well, well, well over 10,000 in two days, or it gained like 25 percent, 30 percent, even more than that. It was, but that was after a down move. So in a situation like this. Maybe this would be a bottom and maybe you could spend like a year and a half getting back to 20,000 or spend three months getting back to 20,000. Maybe this would be an ultimate failure where we're going to get a rally maybe at this point up to 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 8,000 and then continue a pattern of lower highs, lower lows and have a very long, long standing multi-year bear market. And of course, if this would be going to zero, maybe this up move would be followed with a red candle, the very close to the same size. And then over the next uh, three to 300 weeks, it might go to nothing. And I use the word three to 300 in a serious term. And in situations like that, that would, that would kind of suck. But of course, if there was any way of finding this out in advance and you are confident because this would be an interesting situation. Someone's at this point, man, I got to get out because I think this is going to go to nothing. And let's assume they got a portfolio of a half a million dollars and they get out. You could get a situation where it goes to nothing and they'll be able to be happy they got out. Or maybe Four weeks later, the dollar goes through severe turmoil. Maybe even four months later with poor investing. This thing is now up to 50000 after this person sold at 2200 or 1800 or whatever number. So it's always that type of gamble one goes through as they make their decisions. But regardless of what happens, the market's going to end up doing what it's going to do. I am very confident in fiat currency. I'm confident that it is backed by nothing, that it is a debt-based monetary system, that more people are finding out how cruel the system is and how they dislike it. They, they loathe it. They just don't want anything to do with it. And I don't blame them. Because I remember, and I think oftentimes about the way life was for me pre-2008, especially back in the 1990s when we lived our everyday lives under a fiat currency system without even hearing the word fiat, really with no understanding of how the monetary system really worked. And with the internet that has been able to spark this uh, sharing platform, uh, much better than it ever was before. Well, it seems that more and more people are figuring that out. So therefore, I'm going to hold cryptos. I'm going to trade cryptos. That has been an amazing vehicle in increasing my precious metals silver portfolio. So I'll continue to do such. But if you talk about risks, oh my goodness, something like this. Yeah, maybe it'll look like that. But if it goes like this, I mean, we're talking about a system of a coin that pretty much is just so easy to make or we have new cryptos that come in later that actually have better fundamentals that are that have yet to be invented or something in that nature that's something i think about as well 
because I look at this, we're all driving Model Ts. The, the vehicles come out at the start and that's what you get. People looked at the cars back then and they got better like all innovations would because you bring it out, you get new science and technology, but most important, you get, you get a whole bunch of people that criticize it, that look at it and say, hey, if we add this, it would be better this way. If we took this out, replace this with this, add this variable and so on and so forth. That's how things get better. And uh, yeah, I'm going to end the video at that. I just want to go over possible scenarios that could m manifest itself within the cryptocurrency uh, horizon. I wish I could know for sure which one it would be or why I could confidently state why it's going to be this one and it will not be any of the others. But unfortunately, I am not able to. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.